Hello everyone, I'm Thomas and this is day 4 of 100 days of code in IoT challenge. So today I'm going to continue on yesterday's subject. Essentially, uh, the last step from yesterday was uh, after I deployed the sketch, uh, after the switch from the input pull-up mode to input, um, our button stopped working, right? So once it's pressed now, uh, the, the diode stays on and there is nothing can be done right so yeah let me let me explain uh why this is happening in the breadboard view okay as as to my knowledge the reason why d5 in an input mode doesn't really work as we would expect it to work so basically when we press the button we should see the diode switching on and then we release switching off not just being kept switched on and the reason is that with this configuration, with this code that we have and, and this circuit, the D5 is in something, uh, something called a, a floating state. The floating state basically is, it's more visible on Arduino. I'm not sure why it doesn't really work the same way on ESP8266, but the floating state basically is just switching between one and zero very fast. So on Arduino, we would see this diode blinking when we have an input mode and this sort of circuit where the diode is connected to the ground straight away. Here, it, it works a little bit different. I don't understand why. That's something for me to find out. Probably need to look at the data sheet of ESP. But anyway, let me just quickly fix that. So what we're going to do is basically reflect the circuit that is there internally on the board when the mode is set to pull up. We're just going to build a pull up here. And that's why at the beginning I showed you that we're going to need this 10K resistor. What I'm going to do now with this resistor is let me just maybe disconnect the cables before that so we can do it again from scratch. All right. Okay, I'm gonna keep the button here. I'm gonna keep this cable here. So basically, ground is now the whole minus column. I'm gonna use VIN pin. This one basically uh, serves electricity uh, that is actually flowing from USB in our case. And I'm gonna connect it to plus. Remember to never connect VIN to ground because you're gonna damage the board. So now minus is minus, plus is plus. It's gonna be 3.3 volts as the, uh, the the base voltage for the board. And this is what is going to come from USB. What I'm gonna do now, we're just gonna still stick to D5. So again, connecting this to D5. And then one side of the button. And then the other side of the button uh, let's just get this short one and this is going to be connected to uh, that's going to be connected to the ground and now on this side of the button we're going to attach our resistor and the other or the other uh, side of the resistor is going to be connected to the plus okay okay so now this is in line, right? This this is basically in line. We have resistor from plus to the button and then the button to the wire and that goes from from D5. I'm going to I'm going to keep the 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 uh diode uh of the board for now of the breadboard just quickly to explain you how this changes uh how this is going to basically change the reads uh in the code that something we see in the in the serial monitor in a second. So what you what you need to do is to imagine the flow of the electricity as a as a flowing water. Right? We're gonna start from here, which is which is the VIN. This is this is where the where, where it starts. We have a plus here that goes actually to, to the plus column, right? When the button is when the button is released, right? The electricity is basically flowing to the resistor, through the resistor, and then because those columns are correct connected, it's flowing to to our cable straight to the to the pin D5, 
and pin D5 is actually connected to the ground internally. So what's going to happen is the read that we will get from digital read on D5, this stage is going to be high, right? Because electricity is flowing only one way, just to D5, right? From VIN to the ground through the resistor. When I press the button though, right? The electricity is still gonna is still gonna flow this way, but it's also gonna because this path is gonna be connected. It's also gonna flow to the ground from the button, and because the way for the electricity is shorter to come back to the ground, it always wants to it always wants to flow to to the ground and to get to the ground as as quick as quickly as possible. So what happens is basically we get more electricity flowing here, right? Again, like if you imagine flow of the water, because you know the path to the ground is shorter, it's just gonna take mainly this road. It doesn't mean that it's not gonna flow here, but basically most of the electric electricity is gonna is gonna flow here, All right? So the button is pressed, we get it here, and there is still just a little of electricity flowing to D5. But it's too low for the D5 to read this as high. It is going to be low in this case. So when the button is pressed, we get low. When the button is released, we get high, right? So this resistor is uh, technically uh, being called a pull-up resistor. And I'm pretty sure you have seen uh, in my code at the very beginning where, when we built the, the first circuit that I set the mode for the pin D5 to input pull-up. And the reason this is called input pull-up is basically uh, that the pull-up resistor is built in in the board. So setting a pin mode to pull-up uh, basically you is using the internal uh, resistor that that this actually this circuit uh, is reflecting um, and uh, I guess that that's another thing I I think I need to explain is like why when we run the first uh, the, the code for the first circuit and we check the serial monitor we have seen that when we have the button released, we actually get um, the high voltage, and when it was pressed, it was the low vo low voltage. So it is basically the, the, the case of the pull-up resistor, right? Pull-up resistor is pulling the voltage up at the initial state, as I just said uh, a few seconds ago, right? So the initial state, when you set the mode of a pin to uh, input pull-up, its internal state is basically high. In order to do the other way around, it's not really possible within the board because it's just got a pull-up resistors and actually not all the pins uh, support that. Uh, however, uh, without the input pull-up pull-up mode, uh, we could we could actually, yeah, as I as I also mentioned, we could we could we could swap this and make a, a pull-down resistor and pull down uh, is basically pulling down the voltage at the initial state. And that's actually going to be something that I'm going to do right now because uh, I, I don't really uh, see the point in showing you this circuit working as it is exactly the same like the first one. It's just the, 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 the pull up uh, resistor. But what I'm going to do instead is uh, uh, swap this, uh, make the make the resistor uh, a pull down, and show you the working circuit with that. So let's do this. Right. In order to do that, what I have to do is basically disconnect this, that, and disconnect the resistor from here, and just connect it to 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 the ground. So now we have a resistor connected to the ground, and we have this wire connected to the to the plus basically where the electricity is supplied that is VC v, uh, sorry that's VIN okay so now with this design uh, 
we we actually we having a, a pull down resistor. The initial state uh, for D5 in the input mode is going to be is going to be uh, low, and when I press the button, that should change to to high. All right. Just quickly, I'm I'm gonna go again. Uh, through how the electricity uh, flows. So again, it starts from plus, but now, as you can see, there is not really uh, any connection because like it goes through this wire, right? I'm sure it's visible, yeah, it's going through this wire, then to this side of the button, right? And because button is released initially, there's no connection between those two uh, rows, right? So here, uh, we have this uh, D, D5 pin connected to the ground through the resistor, right? We see D5, this side of the button, then to the resistor and to the ground. And this side, when it's released, when the button is released, is not really connected. So we're having this resistor pulling down the voltage uh, on the on the pin as it is connected right now it is connected to the ground but you know by, by just you know being here it's pulling down the voltage and by pressing the button uh, the voltage basically is, is is starting to flow through this wire through the button and to d5 but it also actually flows through the uh, through the resistor to the minus we have the uh, we have a higher impedance here, so the resistance on D5 is actually higher than the, this resistor itself. But the fact that the, the higher voltage hits D5 makes the read higher than it is than in initial state. That is actually the initial state is like you know pulled down. Uh, it is it is still there, but it's it's minimal. Uh, when we when we supply uh, v in through the button here, right? We basically uh, increase this, right? So, so the D5 is going to be read as high. There's one one important thing on the on the values of the resistors. The general rule says that it should be a tenth of the value of the impedance on on the on the digital pin. Uh, I'm actually not sure what is the, the impedance on D5. I think it's something between uh, 10 or 20 million ohms. Or ohms. That, that's something to, to verify on the, on the data sheet. But basically, I, I've just found on the web that 10K is the recommended one on, uh, on ESPA266. I put a link in the description to an article, uh, like how this work uh, from the uh, electrical engineering point of view. Uh, I think the article actually is going to, uh, ex like from the technical side, is going to explain it better than I, because you know I'm still like I'm still a beginner with 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 the with the with the engineering part of this. Um, so yeah, so if I made any mistake explaining this, uh, please forgive me. Uh, I will get better over time. Okay, let me just connect this. Uh, let me just connect the board to USB and uh, we can we can check if, if this is working. However, one more thing, because like this is not really gonna be effective if we don't have a diode here. So yeah, I'm gonna again, you know, practice is always good. So I'm gonna again connect a diode here. And then I'm just gonna use those uh, wires to to connect it to D1. So it's it's gonna be better if we like you know control the if we control our diode with with the button, uh, not just you know reading the values. So this and that's going to the ground, right? It's the same as yesterday. Uh, let me just make sure. If this is the the right, yeah, that's the con that's connected in the right way. Cool. Okay. So now I'm going to connect uh, USB and uh, a USB cable to the computer. Okay, that's connected. Oh, 
So as you can see, uh, our our diode is on now, and basically the reason is uh, it's not that uh, our initial state is uh, for the of the voltage uh, that is uh, supplied to D5 is high. That's not true. It's actually low. The reason is our code, because in our code it was the other way around. So we actually switching the diode on when the when the when the voltage is low. The input voltage to D1 is, is uh, to D5 uh, is low and the other way around. So uh, let me just modify our sketch. So I'm gonna change the, uh, the digital rights. Second argument, so from, from low to high. So when, when the, when the uh, read on, the, on D5 is high, we're gonna, we're gonna change the, the voltage on uh, pin D1 that is connected to the diode too high as well and uh, uh, and you know for low it's gonna be also low for like for low read it's gonna be low on the diode so I just modify this I'm gonna save the sketch and I'm just gonna deploy it so now when it's deploying yeah the the, the diode is off we can see those small uh, building diode blinking when the data is transferring Okay, deployment done. Uh, now I'm gonna connect to the serial monitor. Okay, we get some readings. So the state is low. The initial state is low as the uh, as it's supposed to be, right? With the with the pull down resistor. Now I'm gonna press the button, and yeah, the reading is high. Uh, diode is on, and I'm gonna release it, and again, and again, and again, and again. So yeah, that works well. Nice, yeah. Okay, that's everything for today. You can find the links to the code and to the parts and components that I'm using in the description of the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you are interested in this type of content or you just want to follow me doing my challenge, uh, please subscribe to my channel. If you want to give me a feedback, ask a question or if you spotted a mistake with any of my explanations, please leave the comment. This is it for today. Thank you again and cheers. Bye.